Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Ranch, yet again another Prism Live Studio tutorial. This is going to be a quick one because I need to run down quite a lot of information in a very short time. This is the latest version of Prism Live Studio, they made the update and the update had made some significant changes to how the the ui and how the actual software works so and they've also made a few interesting additions to the software and obviously i found some new bugs and so on but i'm going to show you guys step by step how to set up your prism live studio to actual to work for recording and for streaming at the best quality and and somewhat is outperforming obs at the moment one of the new benefits of the latest patch uh, of Prism Live Studio, it is using a lot less resources than it used to. As you see at the moment, I'm recording at uh, quite a high uh, resolution and, and a frame rate, and I'm only using a 2.6 um, CPU usage. GPU, uh, yes, it is really it's really going out at 40%, and then my memory usage will is about less than 1.2 gigs. Um, then, yes, I'm running a high-end machine at the moment, a DDR5 system. But, I mean, if you are running a DDR4, I don't think you will be using more than 2 gigs of RAM just to sort this out. Um, as you can see, my real-life performance, all these things are really... It's doing well. Um, I mean, disk availability for, for recording and such. And I'm recording at a high frame rate, uh, um, kilobit per second as well. So it, everything looks quite healthy and stable. It's much more stable and healthier than the previous version of the software. Okay, if you guys do like this video, before I do continue, please hit the follow and uh, subscribe button. And feel free to come and uh, follow me on Twitch. I really love the support there in Twitch at the Whiskey Ranch. Um, yeah, I stream almost weekly. And yeah, so help me get the goal to at least 600 followers. I would... I mighty appreciate it. Please share and like this video and comment so I can also do a follow-up um, video if there's any questions or bugs I can help and figure out for you guys. All right, cool. Let's continue with then um, setting up. We're going to start with the visuals. The reason why I do have this uh, um, thing recorded at uh, 1080p at 90 frames per second, obviously my screen is a 1080p um, high refresh rate screen. Um, I chose specifically a 1080p screen on a high-end machine because it is because of streaming. Um, it doesn't make sense for me to game at 2K and downscale to 1080p and such. So to keep the base canvas very clean and neat, um, I kept it at 1080p. The performance of the GPU is quite good. Um, I'm running a 3080 Ti, but obviously if you run a 20 series card, this should be applicable as well. Okay, cool. The 90 frames per second also is there because your recording and your um, encoding for streaming uh, should match the frames or it somewhat be close to the frames that you're running when you are actually gaming. When you have way too many frames and uh, on your game but your recording is a lower frame rate, um, then you will see some stutters and weird artifacts happening during the encoding. So try to match the two. I find that 90 frames is the mid-ground, a perfect sweet spot for recording, for uh, streaming, encoding, and as well gaming. Obviously, because gaming is competitive, it, 90 frames is quite good. Um, it's not obviously 120 or 165 hertz uh, of, of frames per second gaming. But, um, I mean... If you're a casual streamer or even a professional streamer, 90 frames, you would agree, isn't um, all that bad. So try to match that. It's for a system quite good at 90 frames. So in order to do that, you're going to go to settings. So there's a little tab here in the corner. Settings. We're going to drop down and wait for the thing to pop up. First settings. We're going to do output. Output. We're going to go to advanced mode. And then we're going to set our thing to NVIDIA NVENC H264. Do not try the, all the others. If you're AMD, there is a different one. I, I can't speak now for AMD encoders. I still need to um, uh, experiment a little bit with the, uh, with the AMD encoders. I wish I could get my hands on a um, RX card to actually experiment a little bit with that. But oh, okay, one day when my ship comes in. So if you guys subscribe to my Twitch channel, even donate to you, I mean, I can always make that work. Okay, rescale output. You're going to click that and go to 920 to 1080p. You Then, this is a very cool thing that I want to introduce. So, usually it's CBR, like your control bitrate. Uh, for your encoder, I use VBR. 
Uh, so bitrate will be at 4,500 and your max bitrate will be at 5,000. So it keeps it nice in between. So it allows that your network can fluctuate and is normal, but it keeps your, your stream quite stable. Instead of, you know, forcing the system to go and do a higher kilobit per second, it allows it to fluctuate and your stream looks seamless. So that's a very interesting thing that I, I know the other, um, softwares does this, but, um, Prism Live Studio seems to perform a little, lot better on this mode. Then your preset will be low, lowest, sorry, P7. At the uh, best quality, it will be tuning with high quality, with your multipass mode will be two passes, quarter resolution. Profile will be high, you will untick, look ahead, you will be psycho visual tuning, you go uh, click tick that, the GPU will stay uh, zero, and your max B frames are two. So keep that as standard. Obviously, audio, that is, uh, is, um, for customization for only if you persist them um, uh, I will go in depth now with the audio after the visuals and then your base canvas remember if you record and stream um, you're gonna keep your base canvas and your output canvas exactly the same do not rescale it to different resolutions up or down try to keep it the same so that's why I keep a 1080p screen rather so I minimize uh, the the interference between the two rescaling uh, sectors but where I do do downscaling filters as a resolution match no downscaling required and so I, i'd use this one at 90 frames per second so i've changed that manually to 90 frames per second as i explained before so i get a better stabler faster smoother experience all right then general i put okay so you guys saw what i did there um and then yeah all the audio stuff is stock standard Okay, so what they have changed on the UI. First of all, your little information tab is now a physical tab with in-depth information. So your CPU and such has been basically, um, they, they have moved that away. Um, they also added the gearbox both sides. So you have your settings this side, but you have your gear, your settings also this side. So you can access the settings both sides. It's just more. I don't even know why they did that. Your um, your scene switcher, such a fade, or even want to add um, stingers and such. Exactly the same button for the transitions is still here. Uh, you could still add your source or scenes with adding the plus. You can detach it. You can export the scenes still the same way. Sources is exactly the same, like on OBS as well. Um, and then so they've just made a few changes a little bit more in-depth information here and then they made a big change with the audio so you used to have a button on your microphone called noise suppression so they've removed that ouch that was the coolest feature of this uh software to be honest but they have improved on the filters so i could see why they removed it because if people are going to use the filters that made sense that they kind of removed it. That little button also used quite a lot of resources. So now that you have a fine tuned filter that actually stock standard works a little bit better, you know, for, for streamers, they can customize a little bit. I just like the button because people could just install this, the, the software, uh, Prism Live Studio and just get going without the hassle of tweaking but okay yeah i'm here and i'm going to try and explain how to make your audio sound so great like mine first we're going to hop on to our, our friend google um, and then we're going to go to google search for this marvel geq okay so that's first one it's from the vox and go um so uh, website i am going to have a link in the description below so don't worry about that and then you're going to go you can download from either max versions or windows i'm running windows so i'm going to try and do that download that cool when that is finished we're going to go and to our audio microphone auxiliary device um because we auto of automatically will be there this is the only thing that will be there you're going to go and click on the cog we're going to make sure your monitor is off like that. Then we're going to right click. Uh, sorry, on this one, 
on there's a little lines next to your audio thing you're gonna click there you're gonna go and filters we're gonna have add a plus the vst 2x plugin so we're gonna add that plugin then you're gonna select the plugin like here and then we're gonna open the interface and then we're gonna preset ultra bass boost activate set as defaults close and close it should be running now and then additional we're going to add a noise suppression noise suppression we're going to go see there's the button i was earlier talking about the rr and noise um so that used to be the button but now it's already built into as a noise suppression it's very very good so yeah it's one of the bonuses of having this as your um of using this entire software okay so now your audio is sounding great rich like you guys could hear in in, in this recording then <laughs> biggest headache but it's i can understand why they added these little features is when you're going to select a scene so let's say I, i'm record i created now this one to display capture i added this display capture all right but let's say i'm playing a video game and for somewhat reason the audio is not coming through because obviously you got the nvidia broadcaster which is my um my camera right here from nvidia my green screen effect that i have which i have here right now but it doesn't explain any audio because only thing that's running is my microphone so how do i get that that this whatever my screen is doing or whatever game i'm playing or music i'm playing from my main system is captured and played to to the stream or to recording well you got to add an extra thing called audio output capture unfortunately this is how it works um uh i already had one but you can just create a new and then name it whatever you want add it there right then it's going to be added keep it always on top as you can see audio capture is not really moving at the moment there's a reason for that because obviously I got no nothing running at the background that is playing audio. Make sure that you use device stamps and then select speakers or whatever your audio is playing through. Obviously, I'm using my PreSonus audio mix amp. My, all my audio is going through my mix amp, so it's going to capture my mix amp audio. That's no gaming, guitar, whatever whatever is happening uh, it will be playing out and then the next very important step is to actually and this is i know it's going to sound very counterintuitive but it, it's going to work trust me um then you're going to go and select uh advanced audio properties here we go you see your capture output so it's already selected uh, monitor only mute output always do that make sure you do have that selected otherwise it's gonna be a extreme headache um you're gonna layer audio some for some freaky weird reason this thing just keeps on um layering audio and and, and it's gonna create a very weird warped loop so you gotta have monitor only and mute output and then this entire thing should work um, pristine for your um captures and, and your recordings um at the moment I, i'm not gonna obviously use it now because i'm having a, i'm using only a one screen all right so that is the next thing let's talk about ui changes so they have a new new beauty lens stuff um added um they have camera functions added they still have the drawing thing um so yeah you could still draw around now there was a question before how do i get rid of this now it's very easy there's a dumps that delete all um you can also apply arrows so the these arrows if you want to indicate stuff this is a new addition this is very cool that they added this um you can obviously add more features as koki uh and uh, it just it just looks so much nicer obviously um different shades of 
lines um, and different pen markers you can use uh, if they added even um, as you can see squares circles uh, straight lines triangles so those things they added which is super cool um, and always to remember to use your dumpster right there now if you want to get rid of the drawing you just click on that tab right there and it will just open up and close it same story with stickers anything that you want to activate and deactivate now one of the other cool features still that uh, I haven't spoke about in my uh, previous videos is adding music to a scene so if you're gonna add music to a scene you can obviously add your to the specific source uh, a playlist so I already have a playlist here um, as you can see there is my playlist and the music is playing obviously I can reduce the audio and you guys can hear it oh well I hope so if you don't hear through your stream but you can hear it in your heads it's it's don't stress you just go to the tabs right there at the bottom the three buttons you're gonna go advance and then you're gonna go to music player monitor only and output so then you be able to output the music and listen to it so and obviously you you um, control the music with this slider the the volume you can activate it and deactivate it with this tab and every time that you switch scenes the music will stop and reactivate when you come back to the scene so you don't need to run an entire playlist separately um, also this this is a cool little addition if you don't want this little information tab to be always open you can show show music information right there you can always remove that um, and you can play and continuously when the scene is active okay so you can tick that and then yeah this is my latest update version of uh, prism live studio and i really hope that you guys enjoyed this um adding channels is still here at the top exactly the one so if you want to add your youtube facebook twitch and such i'm using currently a relay server because i'm south african and we don't have direct connection to twitch so we use relay servers to get a very smooth experience anyways if you guys did like this video feel a thumbs up if you didn't oh well i tried my best to keep it entertaining and short i know 18 minutes is quite long um, and then always to remember to game with a smile on your face. And I'll see you guys on Twitch live again on the Whiskey Ranch. And uh, yeah, adios amigos. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.